It's official. I have been on every permanent roller coaster in Australia. There are 29 permanent coasters currently in operation as of April 2023, and with my trip to Perth this month, I finally ticked off the last two. So after also getting a few rerides on some major coasters and changing my opinions quite a lot since my last Aussie ranking video, now is definitely the time for a full definitive ranking of all 29. I'll also reveal my ratings out of five stars so you can get an idea of what I think the quality is of each ride. Here's my full ranking of all 29 coasters in Australia. Number 29, Motor Coaster, an Interman family launch coaster at Dreamworld. Literally no redeeming qualities. The trains are beyond uncomfortable and the stupid restraint system results in absurdly slow operations. And you wait all that time for a mediocre launch that only causes pain to your knees, stomach and groin. And the launch is the best part because the rest of the layout shuffles and meanders around doing absolutely nothing way too high off the ground. It's garbage, I hate it, zero stars. Number 28, Roller Coaster, an in-house human-powered coaster at Green Valley Farm. This is essentially a glorified piece of playground equipment, but it earns some marks for quirkiness and charm. The sudden gradient changes give you something that kind of resembles airtime, but the feeling is ruined by the consistent jolts up your tailbone. It's mediocre, but it was never intended to be anything special in the coaster game. One star. Number 27. Dragon Express, a Zamperla family coaster at Adventure World. Australia's worst kiddie coaster. The profiling is trash. How that final bend managed to get past the design phase and get constructed, I have no idea. It's atrocious. The thing runs so rough, it bangs and jolts its way through the layout. Thank god it only runs for two laps, but I guess that's a criticism too, since its runtime is less than a minute. One star. Number 26. Little Nipper, a Preston and Barbieri mini coaster at Luna Park, Sydney. It's not badly profiled or rough like Dragon Express, but it has weird quirks that make it just an awful ride. The height restrictions are the same as Boomerang, yet somehow the seats have nowhere near enough room for an accompanying adult. Plus the laterals into the station at the end just slam you super hard into the side, which would be fine if your legs weren't crammed in in the first place. One star. Number 25, Bug Run, a DPV Wacky Worm at Aussie World. It's fine. It's a comfortable enough kitty coaster. It just doesn't really do anything. There's only one drop that picks up any sort of speed. It's definitely the tamest coaster on this list. That being said, it is very well presented, and I think that's where it gains most of its points against the coasters that are below it on this list. It looks great. One star. Number 24. Escape Coaster, a Vacoma suspended family coaster at Dreamworld. The definition of a hang and bang. Mediocre forces, rough ride, poor profiling, and those awful over the shoulder restraints that serve absolutely no purpose except pinning your shoulders down and smacking your ears over and over again. This thing sucks. It's a very friendly reminder that Vacoma used to be not a very good manufacturer. One star. Number 23, Crazy Coaster, an SBF spinning coaster at Adventure Park Geelong. I moved the SBF spinners up the list a little bit because you get a different ride every time and they can be somewhat entertaining for that reason. The seats are comfortable enough. While this one has the longer layout of the two, it's the worst of the two because of its presentation and those ridiculous over the shoulder seatbelt things that end up being wet and gross and soggy and chafing after everyone rides without drying off from the water slides. One star. Number 22, Speedy Beetle, an SBF spinning coaster at Luna Park, Melbourne. The better of the two SBF spinners, even though it's shorter. Its lighting package is a huge win and presentation wise, it looks fantastic for what it is. It also wins for location and all around smoothness. Plus five laps, fantastic ride time. It's just a solid little attraction for the kids and I think it's pretty well done. It just doesn't do much for me. One star. Number 21, 
SpongeBob's Boating School Blast, a Zamperla family coaster at SeaWorld. Now we're getting into the good kiddie coasters. Well presented, smooth, reasonably comfortable for having such small cars, and this is just an all round fun little coaster. Kind of forceful in the back too. I think SeaWorld really produced a great kids area with the Nickelodeon theming, and for me this is the best of the attractions in that area. Two stars. Number 20. Sapphire Speedster Coaster, a Pinfari Zyklon at Magic Mountain Marimbula. I really, really don't like Pinfari, but this one rode okay from what I remember. It's been a long time since I got this credit, but I remember it being a little bit rough and forceful. It gets points for being thrilling, but really it's nothing special whatsoever. I also hate the new theme and colour scheme. Bring back Diamond Python. Two stars. Number 19. Mining Racer Coaster, an SBF race coaster at Gumbaya World. Australia's best kiddie coaster, and for me it isn't even close. Something about this layout just really works for me. It's somehow pretty forceful. In the back you get a decent amount of laterals through the first helix, the ride is really well presented, just like everything at Gumbaya, and the seats are comfortable too. One of the only kiddie coasters that I've ever bothered to do more than once on my first visit. Two stars. Number 18, Roadrunner Roller Coaster, of a Coma Junior Coaster at Warner Brothers Movie World. I've marked this one down quite significantly because of the new trains, they're absolute shin bashers. It also is running quite rough with some very aggressive lateral moments that I don't seem to remember being there before. But hey, it's a super well presented family coaster that provides thrills for the whole family, what more can you really ask for from this coaster model? Three stars. Number 17, Boomerang, a Gerslauer family shuttle coaster at Luna Park, Sydney. Surprisingly, this is a really good coaster. It doesn't offer too much force-wise, but just enough that it's fun and super re-rideable. Smooth, well-paced, great views. Could be better presentation-wise, but the backwards leg is just so much fun. I really like Gerslauer's take on this model. For me, it has Vacoma covered hands down, which is surprising. Three stars. Number 16, Dingo Racer, a Revachon spinning coaster at Aussie World. This is where the thrills start to earn coasters extra points in my books. I like this ride, it's fun and forceful, and every ride will be different. The lap bars do need changing, I hate the Revachon lap bars, they can get super uncomfortable if you end up facing the wrong direction. But the different forces you get on this ride make it a whole lot of fun. Three stars. Number 15, Project Zero. A Maurer Skyloop at Gumbaya World. It's essentially a flat ride in spirit, and it also may be borderline too intense. The vertical chain lift and the Skyloop inversion are just unforgettable. Unfortunately, it does still run with a bit of a rattle, and that can be a problem due to its intensity. I found it very difficult to re ride without feeling a bit nauseous, but it's an experience that never fails to take my breath away, and I love what Gumbaya have done with it. Three stars. Number 14, Scenic Railway, an in-house scenic railway at Luna Park, Melbourne. This one is basically just a scenic train ride with a few dips, it's in the name, right? But huge points for the heritage factor and the experience of riding with a brake man. The scenery around the park really gets some points in my book as well, as does the length of the ride. The drops can be decent, depending how cautious the brake man is. Three stars. Number 13, Gold Coaster an arrow looping coaster at Dreamworld. I've had my mind changed on this one. I used to hate it, but the verse restraints are a notable improvement on when I first rode it back when it was Cyclone and I decided back then that I hated it. There are still some janky transitions and the vertical loop in the front is like having a head on car crash, but it's definitely enjoyable. Not great, but something I can ride and enjoy for its force and speed. Three stars. Number 12. Big Dipper, an Intamin Hot Racer at Luna Park, Sydney. This really could have been such a great ride, but it rattles far more than it has any right to. The launches and inversions are really good, and the airtime pop is a nice surprise. Other than that, the layout is fairly mediocre, and the rattle really does ruin the whole ride. The Intamin restraints are very comfortable though, I love them. Three stars. Number 11, Abyss a Gerslauer Eurofighter at Adventure World. 
I was expecting this to be a headbanger, and it was, but really not that bad. The ejector airtime over the drops and that airtime hill are fantastic, and the inversions ride well, the positives are great, sure, it headbangs a fair bit, and I wish they could somehow replace the restraints to fix that issue, but I like it for its theming and for its pure force. Three stars. Number 10, Wild Mouse, a Hopkins and Pierce wooden Wild Mouse at Luna Park, Sydney. Nostalgia is probably keeping it in my top 10, but so does the force of that airtime and those laterals. This thing is crazy. It constantly feels like you're about to hurdle off the track. Sure, it's rough, but a lovable type of rough. It's amazing how much more thrilling this is than Big Dipper. A family thrill ride built 60 years ago is more thrilling than a state-of-the-art Interman prototype. Three stars. Number nine, Green Lantern Coaster, an SNSL loco at Warner Brothers Movie World. Every time I think I'm going to move this down my list, I go back and ride it, and I just enjoy the hell out of it. The hang time is great, I love the first drop, and it's just such a weird and fun coaster that mixes in some oddball elements like that out of bank turn. It's a great number three for the park in my books. Nothing super special, but a decent enough thrill coaster that I really enjoy. Three stars. Number eight, Storm Coaster, a Mark Water Coaster at SeaWorld. This is another one I keep trying to move down the list, but I just can't. And I really don't like that it gets so much hate because it replaced Bermuda Triangle. Sure, it's short, but the airtime on that final drop, the splashdown, the overall experience, just the presentation of the whole area, it's such a fun ride that the whole family can enjoy. And you don't get airtime like that with restraints like those anywhere else in this country. Three stars. Number seven, Scooby-Doo Spooky Coaster, a Mark Wild Mouse at Warner Brothers Movie World. I'm going to ignore the last iteration of this ride and rank it on when I first wrote it because this thing was so great. Immaculate theming and a great Wild Mouse coaster section. It was the all-rounder of family rides on the Gold Coast. It had everything you could possibly want. I really hope the theming and the smoothness return to the ride with its new refurbishment when it opens again in 2025. Four stars. Number six, TNT a Vacoma suspended family coaster at Gumbaya World. Absolute bullseye from Gumbaya. This thing is so good. Smooth and pacey. The first drop is incredible, especially in the back. The overbank is super forceful. I love the presentation and the ride is a hoot from start to finish. One of those coasters I can just do over and over and over all day and never get tired of it. Love it to bits. Four stars. Number five, Jet Rescue, an Interman family launch coaster at SeaWorld. Such an underrated gem of a coaster. The launches are powerful, and in the second half, the transitions between those turns are batshit crazy. It flows so nicely, and the rock work really adds to the experience of racing through the landscape. It's a little short, but it's a brilliant coaster that provides thrills no matter who you are. Four stars. Number four, Steel Taipan, a Mark launch coaster at Dreamworld. I have changed my mind about this being my number two in Australia since riding another Blue Fire clone overseas. I think I just realized that Taipan doesn't actually run that well comparatively speaking, but I still like it. It's smooth, a good lengthy ride, the reverse spike is actually the highlight of the ride and it probably has the best inversions in the country. Four stars. Number three. Superman Escape, an intimate accelerator at Warner Brothers Movie World. There probably won't be another coaster like Superman for a very long time to come. That theming and presentation is bang on the money. The launch, so powerful. The airtime is great too. It was running a tiny bit rough the last time I was there, but I'll forgive it because it's an all time favorite for me. Such a brilliant and breathtaking ride. Four stars. Number two. Leviathan, a Gravity Group wooden coaster at SeaWorld. 
Yeah, you've probably all guessed the rest of the ranking by this point. Leviathan is very close to perfect for me. Relentless, fast paced, smooth, brilliantly themed, and a whole bucket full of fun. The backward seats are great, the Timberliner trains are super nice, and the ride feels long and full of variety. I love this coaster so much, one of my favorites of all time. Absolutely fantastic, four stars. Number one. DC Rivals Hypercoaster, a Mark Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World. What can I say that I haven't already said? Let's just marvel at the beauty of this thing and its incredible forces. It's going to take some investment from a park to topple this one off top spot. Five stars. So that is my full ranking of all 29 permanent coasters in Australia. Where do you agree or disagree with my ranking? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.